Welcome to the Providence College Podcast. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Play. If you like what you hear, please review and share with others. Email podcast at providence.edu with questions or comments. Go Friars! Hello and welcome to the Providence College Podcast. My name is Chris Judge, college videographer and producer of the podcast. And in this episode, you will hear remarks from the formal opening and blessing of the center at Moore Hall, which was renovated as part of the college's diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. We hope you enjoy this episode of the Providence College Podcast. Bon dia, buenos dias, buongiorno, good morning. My name is Rafael Zapata. I'm Associate Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer here at Providence College. And it is my, uh, my pleasure to welcome you to this wonderful occasion. Space would not have happened without Father Shanley agreeing to allow our office to develop it in January 2015. But the space that you see today wouldn't look the way it does without the activism of our students, particularly the Board of Representatives, And I want to acknowledge them. If any of you are here, would you care to stand? If not, that's fine. Would you care to stand the members of the Board of Representatives and student activists? That really helped convey the need for transformation. And together with Father Shanley and other members of the administration, helped make this place happen. And I would like to start with Dwayne uh, Boulinier. Class of 1994, a college trustee, and this weekend's co-chair. This room, the Bullen Yee Lounge, is named in recognition of Dwayne and his wife, Nancy. Dwayne and Nancy have demonstrated their belief in the vision for this center with the generous gift. The lounge week will be a multifunction space where our community can learn, create, engage uh, with one another. With this space and the addition of the mural in the front that is pending, I'm I'm certain in no time that this will be one of the most popular spaces on campus for a range of activities, for learning, for lounging, for meetings, lectures, and social events. And you see that as the spaces, the cafe, the active learning space, the collaboration space, are all intended to do more than one thing. It's flexible, so we can move things around, and we want everyone to find a place here. Faculty staff, students, and members of the Smith Hill and Elmhurst communities here in the space. Now, the broader context here is the changing Providence College. <clears throat> Last November of 2016, the college hosted the Black and Latino Male Conference uh, as part of the Consortium of, on High Achievement and Success, 16th Annual. So Father Shanley was going to give some remarks, and I said, well, let's see how many Black and Latino male students we had, just as an example, when he arrived in 2005. What we learned that in 2005, there were 24 black men, two, four, and 35 Latino males. That's right. In 2005, 24 black males, 35 Latino males. In 2016, when Father Shanley gave his his remarks, there were 59 black males and about 129 Latino males. All right. These are just males. We have far more women of color on the campus. But I think that (laughs) for those of you, many of you were here, uh, Ralph Tavares is class of 2000, and some of you were here, even back then, 2001, sorry, sorry. (laughs) 2000, like, get it right. Thank you, Terza. I got you, I got you. (laughs) Love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, Class of 2001. And, and essentially, you were probably an athlete or you were part of the MLK program. And you might not have been found anywhere else. Now, that's becoming more complicated, but we still have a ways to go. When Father Shanley arrived in 2005, the school was 7.5% folks of color. Today, it's close to 18%. And with that increase requires more work. So this center is part of that infrastructure that we need. If we're going to make diversity an asset in learning and community building, this is certainly an important part of that. As we hope to make not just a more diverse space, more diverse community, but a more inclusive community, one that remedies the segregation along race and class that is so rampant. 
Now, the way we look at diversity is not simply around race and class, of course, gender, disability, sexual orientation, gender identity, veteran status, political perspective and ideology. And even as a Catholic school, we recognize that among Catholics, there's great diversity and that there are members of our community who are Jewish, Protestant, Muslim, and some of no face at all. And that it is in that composition that we learn a great deal from one another through engagement, through authentic exchange. The challenge for us is how do we create the space, brave spaces where we can do so and learn from one another as opposed to protect ourselves and stay silent because that serves no one. But that is indeed a hard task. I know we're going to have a blessing and where I come from, we say, yeah, we're going to go. We're going to bless that space. We're going to do something good. We're going to do something positive. So that double entendre certainly uh, applies here. Now, the driving forces behind this weekend's program, uh, Andre Owens and Dave Bollinier, um, they are next. Come on up. So uh, I am Dwayne Bollinier, as uh, Raphael uh, uh, just said. Uh, you know, he got me a little bit emotional. You know, you stand up on the stage, you see this room, you see this space, and you see this weekend. It's really something special to behold. So thank all of you for all the hard work that's, been, that's taken place to pull this together. Um, you know, Andre came to me, I want to say it was in the September meeting last year. Um, so over a year ago, and said, you know, I'm really thinking about pulling together a multicultural union. Um, and I'm talking to Bob Ferrer, and we think we have a plan, we could pull this together. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's, let's see what we can do. And so Andre really has been the driving force behind all this. This was his creativity, his idea. Um, and I give Andre a lot of credit. So Andre, thank you. <laughs> I want to thank Bob um, Ferreira and, and the members of the committee for pulling this together. Uh, really a lot of hard work. Um, like I said, over 12 months of preparation has gone into this. And it felt like towards the end we were meeting every single day. So a lot of hard work has, has gone into pulling this together. So um, I want to thank everybody for that. And I want to thank all of you for being here today. I'm really looking forward to a great day, a great event. And hopefully one, honestly, that we can build on going forward. This is not sort of a moment in time that just stops. This is going to be something that we're going to build upon. We talked about this before, like, what do we call success for this weekend? Is it, you know, 100 people or 200 people or 300 people? But really success means that people come back to the college and are re-engaged and want to come back again two years from now, four years from now. And it's really nice for us. We looked at the list of who was coming when we, when we, uh, over the last couple of days. And there was a lot of, this is a new term that I now know of, the fold, the fires of the last decade, which I had no idea what that was until recently. <laughs> Um, and a lot of the fold was going to be a participant in this, in this weekend. So it's great to see that folks want to come back, um, at, you know, within their first 10 years and hopefully we can continue that, uh, into the future. So again, thank you all. I want to, uh, echo Dwayne's, uh, remarks. I want to thank everybody for coming. It is, um, it's just awesome seeing. Uh, the folks who are here. Um, Dwayne is way too generous. Um, but this was definitely a joint collaboration. Uh, I may have mentioned it to him, but anyone who knows Dwayne, once you mention something to him, he has a million ideas. So um, he is, uh, this has definitely been a, a great project to work on. And of course, Bob and his staff is uh, uh, key to getting anything done. Um, so I'm Andre Owens. I'm from the class of 1985. I grew up in Bloomfield, Connecticut, not too far from here. And I live down in um, the Washington, D.C. area now. I'm here with my wife, Allison, uh, and it's just great to be, uh, to be back on campus. Dwayne and I come for trustees meetings, of course, but it's to actually be among the students and, and fellow alum. It's just, it's just terrific. Um, I wanted to mention a couple of things. Raphael mentioned the, the board members that are here, our fellow trustees, and that's great. And I, I wanted to let everyone know that there's tremendous support, not just for this event, but for diversity, uh, throughout the college generally on the board. It is something that we think about, we talk about, Father Shanley um, talks about it all the time. Um, it's connected to our strategic plan. I think you're gonna hear a little bit more about that a little later, maybe during a leadership panel. So I just wanna let everyone know, and I wanna thank our fellow board trustees members for coming. You are, your support has been instrumental for this project. Um, I, I know, you know, many of us have met 
through various affinity groups since graduating. Through Dwayne mentioned the fold. We were talking last night about here we're part of the old, not right. the fold. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, but 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 I know for 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 all of us alum, there are all sorts of meetings that go on uh, throughout the year. Different affinity groups get together and, and things like that. And I think that's great. And and I know it's going to continue. Um, it's no accident though that we wanted to have this. Uh, event here, and we want it to be more than just one affinity group. We want it to be a multicultural celebration. Um, we think this weekend is going to be a terrific event, and as Dwayne said, it's just going to be the start of things. We we um, we hope that this is something that we can replicate going forward. Uh, we'll see how it how it goes this weekend. We're going to be reaching out to you as follow up for ideas. How do we keep this going? How do we keep people in touch? And I think we're going to have a great day. So thank you. So, you know, what I would say, so we've, we've got a number of goals for this weekend, um, but a, another sort of important driving fact that we want to do is making sure that we as alumni, and I know this is important for both Andre and I, um, but we as alumni connect back with the students that are here on campus. I can't, I can't tell you when I was a student to have a mentor or mentors, multiple mentors have been very important to me, would have been huge for my development. Um, and I hear from students all the time that are looking for jobs at Wells Fargo. Sometimes they need to check that because it might not be the best place to go these days with some of the problems <laughs> we've been having. Uh, but, but, you know, they, they, they're interested in investment banking, which is what I do with Wells Fargo. They want to um, learn more about it. I want to hear more from the students of color on our campus. I don't hear enough from them. And I think that our, all of our alumni would, would love to be an have an opportunity to mentor some of the existing students on campus. So that's a goal of this weekend is I want to connect with the many existing students. I know some of the other alumni want to have that exact same goal. So um, uh, it's something that we want to achieve. And I know it's something for career services, as I look at Patty Golf, that's important for her as, as well. Um, and just a, a quick note on this space as well. So I think I mentioned this before when I, when I was talking out uh, to Father Shanley in advance. I think my first class at Providence College was in this room right here, 8.30, Monday morning, I might have been a few minutes late, but it was, it was in this, this room. And for me, you know, I lived at Raymond my freshman year. I lived at Marr my sophomore year. Um, then I moved off campus, but I was, I was here. And so this was sort of, I mean, our Western civilization classes were in this building. This is sort of the center of campus for me. And so I think that putting the center here, center of, of the campus, is sort of symbolic to what it means to Providence College from a diversity standpoint. This is the center of campus, it's the center of campus life, and hopefully it's more than just symbolic, that is truly um, a reflection of who we are as Providence College going forward. Everyone knows Father Shanley, class of 1980, um, tremendous president of the college, great leader of the board, um, just sort of drives, drives us, drives things, and uh, he's been a big supporter of this whole project of this weekend, and we thank you for that. Thank you, uh, Dwayne and Andre, for all your hard work for this weekend and for your service on the board. Um, I don't want, I'm not going to thank everybody again because this, this program is going longer than it was supposed to. So I'll kind of cut to the chase, but there is one person that I, I do want to thank um, because he didn't thank himself. And that is Rafael Zapata. Um, Uh, I've been pushing him on this building for two years now, and I keep saying, come on, we need to make more progress. And, you know, Raphael, from the beginning, has been committed to this being a truly inclusive process, that this space reflect the real needs of our students, and our faculty and our staff. It took us a little bit longer to go that route. But now that I've seen the space, it was worth it. It was definitely worth it. And even as of two days ago, I walked through this building, there was no furniture. Uh, so it's been a little bit of a miracle in the last 48 hours uh, that we've got it together the way that we did. But, you know, Raphael is leaving us uh, next semester to go down to Fordham University uh, to, go, to return to the city where he grew up. And we wish him nothing but the best. But um, this is kind of a capstone of of the work that he's done on our campus. So uh, I want to thank you, Raphael, again, for the work that you did. <laughs> you 
Yeah, like Dwayne, I, I have flashback memories of this building as well. Uh, my first two years as a priest, I lived in what was then Stephen Hall right there. And I taught 830, 930 Civ uh, in this building. So that little corridor right there was a big center of my life. And to see this space transform the way that it is, you'd never know that this was the Civ building. Um, it has been truly a transformational space. And what I think is most important about the space that we've created is the multi-purpose use that we have in this building. Every room, and I do encourage you to walk around the building, every room is different. Every room can serve multiple purposes. And there's so much that we can do here because as we all know, and as the events of the last week on our campus have reminded us, there is still a lot of work to do at Providence College. We have become a more diverse community, and I believe we're a more inclusive community, but we're not where we need to be. And I am so grateful today to have a new space where we can create the kind of encounters that will really transform lives. This building will be a building where there will be educational activities in here. We have a wonderful classroom. There will be cultural celebrations in this building. There's meeting space here. There's eating space here. And as Dwayne mentioned, I really do hope at the center of our campus that this will be a place of encounter because it's really encounters that make the difference. When you meet somebody who's different from you and begin to have a dialogue, that's where you start to learn. We do a lot in the classroom, which is great. Uh, and that's an important part of the work that we do, but we need to create spaces where students will meet students, where they will have the kind of cultural and educational exchanges and personal exchanges and the dialogues that will change people. And this space has given us a wonderful opportunity to continue the work here at Providence College. And I'm really thrilled uh, with what we were able to come up with. Um, so I'm going to bless this space now. I'm going to disappear for a moment. I'm going to make sure I get every room, including the dance studio uh, in this building. So uh, I'm going to say a prayer. I'm going to walk around and throw the holy water. That's what Catholics do. Uh, and then I'll come back through that uh, ending there and uh, we'll conclude our program. So let us put ourselves in the presence of our God and give thanks for this building. God of all grace, we give thanks for the blessings of the spirit that have brought us to this day. We give thanks also for all the members of our campus community and the architects, the designers and workers who have made this renovation a reality. In the diversity of world cultures, you reveal to us the manifold tapestry of your creation. As we gather this day to dedicate the mission of the center at Moore Hall, we echo the words of Pope Francis, praying that the Holy Spirit may bring forth a rich variety of gifts, while at the same time creating a unity which is never uniformity, but a multifaceted and inviting harmony. May this space be a place of welcome and creativity for all of our students, faculty, staff, and administration. It is here that we will gather, teach, and learn share our stories, work for justice, and we pray, come ever closer to the unity your kingdom demands. We ask you now to send your spirit upon this center, that all who come here may be transformed in grace, renewed in love, and nourished by the rich diversity that is celebrated here. May the blessing of Almighty God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come now upon this place and all who gather here. And we ask this in your most holy name. Amen. Thank you for, for that. Fiona, uh, Kayola Claude, we'll close this out. Um, hello, my name is Fiona Claude, um, and I've been invited to share um, a message through poetic form. Um, I think in the midst of the celebrating of multiculturalism and diversity, it's important to take a step back and acknowledge um, the, the struggle, the heavy history, and the truth that comes behind being a person um, of a different culture. 
Um, so for myself, coming from my perspective as a student of color um, and as a black woman in America, um, this is my message. It's called Unwritten Blackness. It's like they want me to forget about my history. As if my ancestors selling their souls to the white man is something to be forgotten. I know my history practically went unwritten, but I still hear the screams of black children having been worked, lynched, and tormented underneath the hands of a new devil. My history dates back to when the gates of hell swung open with a welcome mat greeting reading, welcome to the land of white supremacy where it'll be on our slaving backs that this country actually becomes worth remembering. Fast forward, it is now 2017. I still have people questioning my humanity. I'm still struggling communicating that my black is not an atrocity. My skin shouldn't be a warning label. My black has forced me to be a rebel. My black is a shade too rich, too bold, too unapologetically unafraid. Don't you see? I am the remaining bits of a hundred years of history that has been squished into one month annually. I am the extended arms of my ancestors who are still reaching for Martin Luther's dream. I am one individual among hundreds leaving a mark in black history. I am the new Rosa Parks boycotting for my rights in the 21st century because yes, all lives matter, but too many of my black brothers and sisters have fallen victim to an unjust killing spree. I am the resurrected Malcolm X, still fighting for people to acknowledge my intelligence before they see the color that excludes me from the we that we uphold in this country's constitution. I am the black child of my parents becoming puppets of today's slavery as they work to pay my tuition. For education is key. Education is the key. Education is what taught me to speak. Education is what sets me free. Education is what allows me to think. Education is why I'm still breathing. Education is what exposed the truth about my ancestry. It is because I have been educated about my past and educated enough to create my future that I'm able to advocate for myself and my ancestry. Therefore, trust me. I will no longer let my blackness go unwritten in history. So please, acknowledge the heartbeat behind my skin that labels me as diversity, and instead recognize my humanity. I am fighting to re rewrite the history of my ancestors who never had the chance to hold the key. Thank you.